channel man hey we finally made it to part two on this house project me my dad and my cousin have been working on it's been a lot of stuff happening with this project a lot of stuff moving real quick i try to do the best i could to collect all the good footage as possible to make this video as dope as possible for all my new viewers that's watching me my dad and my cousin are trying to get in the field of building custom homes i just thought it'd be kind of cool to film the whole building process that goes along with a new construction you know on homes and stuff like that because it's i mean it's really cool you know to see a house built like this because you go from raw land some type of structure and then you know you go from a house being framed up to a house being like actually like built up to where you can actually live in another thing i do want to mention if you have not watched part one i recommend stopping what you're doing right now literally like stop what you're doing right now and go ahead and check out my part one video and then come on right back to this point another thing that i also want to bring up is i do want to apologize about it was certain things i really wanted to film in this video that I really couldn't put in this video because it was a lot of stuff happening really quick now like it was times like i really wish i could have got down there and got some good footage of these guys framing but they got up there like really really early in the morning i couldn't really get everything so i do want to apologize for not getting cer certain things that i wanted to film and put in this video i do want to apologize for that you know i try to do my best to get all the good footage as possible to make it a real good video but all that stuff out the way man i'm gonna just stop talking let you guys go ahead and check this video out hope you guys enjoy all right, guys, we're finna dive right into it right here. Now, if you watch my part one video at the end, this is pretty much what we ended at. We were getting things prepped up for the basement slab. Well, right here, we're pretty much getting things wrapped up with the basement slab. So the basement slab was 2,600 square feet down here. We used about 45 to 50 yards of concrete to get this all in here. And we also put fiber in the concrete also, which is good for preventing cracks and other issues that might show up. The guys out here working right now just smoothing things out so everything's gonna look good and this is what i mean by look good right here everything's been complete and looking real solid now i do want to apologize i did like i said before i did want to try to get some good footage of these guys working on certain things but i couldn't get them doing the slab and i just want to apologize for that but really how they do stuff like this is they'll spread a good load of gravel out they'll put plastic over the gravel and then they'll put rebar in there and then they'll box all of that stuff in with some two by tens as like a guideline and then the concrete truck will show up and do his job and then should come out looking good just like right here now that you got your slab out of the way you can focus on the next phase of this which is going to have to deal with your lumber now all this stuff right here is going to be called a lumber package and how you go about getting one is to take your house plans down to a building material supply company to get one this material right here is what you would call an LVL beans, which stands for laminated veneer lumber. It's extremely good for long spans and it's really, really good in basements. What we got next here is what you would call the open web floor truss. It's going to be the main floor structure for this house, which is really nice. That material is supposed to be really tough and sturdy, so you won't hear a lot of squeaks and little noises and everything when you walk on it next right here is just the decking for the house this is basically just the flooring for the house all that material right there is just gonna go on top of that lath material that i just showed you that open floor truss this stuff right here is just some two by fours and two by sixes material you just use to frame up the house just more open web flooring material it's a lot of that stuff moving on down we got some more stuff down in the basement now these right here the uh lumber on the top we decided not to use those right there those are six by six posts we were going to use them in the basement but we figured out a better route that we could use and all that stuff right there was two by fours two by sixes more decking two by fours two by sixes it's a lot of that stuff need a lot of that material to frame up the house that's pretty much all the material you're probably going to need for right now besides the roofing stuff which is going to show up later now you got your lumber stuff out of the way we can finally get to putting stuff together 
Now this is what the floor system looks like right here. As you can see, you got your open web floor truss installed and you got this other material that's sitting on top of it. This material is gonna be called the Aventec Tongue and Groove Subflooring. And this stuff right here is really extremely strong. It's water resistant. It's literally the best material out there for this. This is how this stuff is installed right here. What you're gonna do first is you're gonna wanna put glue down on the open web floor truss, put some glue down on top. Then you'll get the subflooring right there. You'll put it on top of the glue. You'll get a large hammer and a two by four and you'll knock it into place right there. Since it's tongue and groove, it'll be pretty much fixed in right there. And the final thing that you're gonna wanna do is just hit it with a nail gun, nail it down real good. And then after that, all you gotta do is just fill in the other places. And once you fill in all the other places, you get to this right here. And this is what it looks like when it's pretty much all the way completed. I do wanna apologize for the lighting because it was real late in the afternoon right here. Now that open space right there, that's gonna be the stairwell going down to the basement. So there's no need to fill that in right there. And again, this is what it pretty much looks like when it's all the way completed. Now this right here is the next thing that needs to be done right here. We're kind of stepping away from the lumber and doing framing and stuff right now. What we're doing right here is we're getting things prepped up for the garage slab right here. The guy driving the tractor is just removing loose soil and getting everything ready for the gravel to come in. Just basically grabbing a good load of dirt, digging down deep enough to where he can get to some new dirt. And just try to remove all that old uh, dirt that's up top right there. So I just got some real good clips of him just, you know, digging up stuff, handling business. I gotta, give, I gotta tip my hat off to this guy right here. He really knew what he was doing because he really had to operate in a real tight area. Once he gets a good bit of the dirt right, you can go to this right here, which is the gravel truck. He's gonna drop a load of gravel. Just got some good footage of him just dumping this load right here. And when he's completed dumping the load, the gravel's gonna be spread out all along those areas right there. Now, another thing that I do wanna mention is you can see right here, he's spreading the gravel around. All that open area right there, where that gap is right there, you need to put gravel in there. You know, some people might go, well, why can't you put dirt in the area right there? The reason you don't wanna put dirt in uh, open area like that, it's probably gonna cause problems for your slab in the future. So, best thing to do is to do what we're doing right here, put some gravel in there. Now, this is what it looks like when all the gravel comes in, everything's been spread out, and the garage is pretty much prepped and ready for the concrete to come in so we can get it really looking right. Now that's a lot of other stuff that's been going on prior to getting the garage slab prep. So all this right here is basically the first phase of framing that got done in the house. Definitely a lot to see. <laughs> it's a lot of wood, a lot of wood. Two by fours everywhere up in here. There's some right there just laying right there. Now these two by fours you see hanging like this at an angle, those are actually used as brace and they won't remove those until the roof comes in. So they're just there basically for support. Let you guys check the house out right here. That area right there is actually gonna be where the fireplace is. Again, like I said, it's just the first phase of framing. It's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but they're getting it done, definitely. Give you guys a good little walk around of the house right here. I believe this is the master bedroom right here. Good size master bedroom. Now these are just some exterior shots that I got. You can see the slab for the garage a little bit better right there. Just some good exterior shots. I cannot believe that guy was walking on that right there. Uh, that, that looks so dangerous. The guy that drove the tractor and helped us out with the basement slab, he also did us a big favor and helped us backfield on some other points on the house. Move some dirt around for us. This is a good back view of the house right here. It looks really big from the back versus looking at it from the front. And I've been kind of holding out on this right here, but now we can finally go to the basement, my favorite part of the house. This is how the basement looking right here. It looks real, real nice down here. You can see the open web floor truss, how it's looking, those LVO beams that I mentioned earlier in the video. Now those posts that are holding it up right there, those are just gonna be temporary posts. We're gonna get some permanent steel posts that we're gonna put in place for them later on. That open area over there where it looks like a door should be at, that's right there is basically the stairwell for the basement. We just need to install the stairs right there. Again, this is basically how the basement's looking. Looks real good to me. It's, like I said, this is my favorite part of the house right here. It's 
really roomy, got a ton of space right there. Storm shelter, big garage door over there. You can put whatever you want down there. Now I figured I'd help you guys out on how to identify certain lumber. So what we got right here is a two by 12. Next to it is a two by 10. Next to that is a two by six. And next to that is a two by four. And on the end down there's some special wood called OSB sheathing wood. It's used for the exterior of the house when it's being framed up. So this is a good look at how the OSB sheathing wood looks when it's installed. And this is the garage, it's finally done. The walls are pretty much up around it. We did end up doing something pretty nice and handy in the garage also. As you can see, the slab has been poured. So we decided to pour the slab to be a one step entry into the house, which I think is pretty handy. You know, if you got a load of groceries and stuff like that, you don't really gotta walk up a lot of steps. You can just walk up one step and then you're right there in your kitchen. Going back in the house, it is some stuff that got done. The fireplace right here is completely finished. The stairs have been also installed. So I'll take you guys down to the basement now. We end up using two by 12s as the steps. They're really good to walk on because they're wide and they're really strong. So we'll go down here to the basement. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Well, what's new in the basement? It looks the same as last time. And you're right, it's nothing that's really changed down there except it's not as dirty. But it's gonna be some big changes that's gonna be happening down here pretty soon. Remember I told you guys that these posts that were in here holding up these LVL beams, they were temporary. Well, we're gonna be taking those out and be putting something way better to support those beams in there. And that's why we're back down in the basement. Now these were the steel posts I was talking about right here. Nickname Heavy Duty. These things are no joke right here. They can hold up the world, like literally. I think they're rated to hold, hold up to 40,000 pounds. Now that's a lot of weight right there. And the cool thing about these right here is you can drill them into the concrete, so they're gonna be real stationary. And then also you can drill them also into the LVL beams. So they're not going nowhere and they're doing the job right here, holding everything up right. I like how they're designed too also, how that, how that lip sits right there and just holds it all down, which is really cool. The design on these posts are really nice. We pretty much wrapped up things in the basement. Now we can go on to this next phase, which is gonna be the roofing phase right here. This is pretty much the roof truss that came in for the house. And what's cool about these roof trusses for this particular house is it's engineered so the weight really sits on the exterior points of the house not the house itself just showing you guys how it really looks we're in the garage right now looking at it and this is what the roof truss really looks like right here real big piece of material and there's going to be nail plates on each corner where the wood meets up to lock everything in place and again this is engineered stuff right here so you can only use this for this house what's good about having things engineered is the overall structure of the house is going to be strong so this is what the house looks like once the rough end framing is finished right here it's really starting to look more like a house right here now that stuff on the top of the roof right there that white stuff that's what you're going to call underlay they put that on the roof before the shingles come in during the rough end the house really looks good from the back it makes it look like it's got real size when you look at it from this angle now we can go inside and see how things really looking. This is how the garage looks now since the roof stuff's done. That roof really makes a difference. It looks a lot better right now. Moving on back into the house, you can kind of see how things are laid out now. Now that silver stuff up top right there, that's what you're gonna call radiant barrier decking and it reduces the heat in the attic. You can really get a good look at how those roof trusses look up there. The house really looks good when you get to this point. You can actually see how things are laid out, what room is what. You get a good idea how big rooms are and everything. And that's pretty much gonna wrap this video up right here, folks. If you like this video, man, you know, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, you know, subscribe to my channel, man, subscribe, please. Like, you gotta watch this all the way to the end. I promise you it's gonna be worth checking out when it's finished. Until then, y'all stay tuned for the next part. Peace.